anyway, he just, but had I had Google in those days, I might have got that gig. So, know them, you know, find out. I, I did it shamelessly once on a job I didn't particularly believe in, but I just needed the cash. And I knew that the director had a particular hatred for a show that I loved. I had, you know, it really was. I was a red ten, and he was a black ten. And I went in there and I agreed with everything he said. I got the gig, and I needed it. I really enjoyed um, David's workshop. It was great to um, to get on our feet and do some exercises, as well as just um, find out about someone who's very much working in the industry. He gave us um, sort of games to play that that had an outcome and a meaning that you could use the next time you're involved with deconstructing a script or working on a, a scene or something like that. Just wander around the room, just uh, playing the status that you find on that card. Bill Gaston and Max Stafford Clark, who taught me um, with the cards from the old Royal Court, which is sort of like home bridge social realism, so it was all about naturalism and the writer is everything and what have you. But the thing I remember walking out of afterwards um, was thinking, God, I've listened to all the arguments about different things about the weather, about breakfast, about you know, whatever it happens to be. I didn't notice anybody acting. So I've got loads of information. And I think that's really important. He was very positive, he was very warm, and it was a thoroughly enjoyable afternoon. Um, um, do you think that there's uh, such a thing as having a breakthrough? And, uh, and if so, what was your breakthrough? And what advice can you give us to maximise our, maximise our chances of getting a breakthrough? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I think is a reasonably interesting story. We were doing a film called Mrs Brown, uh, God, I mean, mid to late 90s, I suppose, which was uh, a film with Judy Dench and Billy Connolly about uh, Queen Victoria going into mourning after the death of um, uh, Prince Albert. And, and I was playing Judy's son. And um, the, the, the difference with working on, so this is just to define a phrase for you, if you like, the difference between working on a project like that in the UK and then shipping it over to America and realizing that Coming into the rehearsal room, we, we obviously don't get very much rehearsal, whatever you're doing in this country, uh, or anywhere. You know, rehearsal's a luxury. Well, rehearsal's a luxury because it doesn't pay. The producers won't make any money out of you rehearsing. So why have rehearsal? Um, uh, so you go to rehearsal with Billy Connolly and Judy Dench, and you're thinking, Jesus Christ, you know, I'm a working class kid from Watford, and that's like playing Judy Dench, and that's Billy Connolly. And I told Andy Amos when I was a kid on the bus going to school, Billy Connolly's joke that he did on parties, and I'm now I'm sat next to, you know, extraordinary. You go to America for the press night of uh, the East Coast of America, nobody knows who Judy Dench is. We haven't got a clue. We rang our hotel once, we said, Dame Judy Dench there, and they said, is that three people? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, so, so there's like, look, there's the difference between, for me, that was like, I was doing a job at the National Theatre, where I only got the job in that particular film, because I happened to be playing the part at the National Theatre in a different piece of work, but, it was, you know, it was very fortuitous. And going back to your question, it was the agent dragged the producers and the casting director along. I happened to be playing the same part. I mean, you know, I was. It was like such a stroke of luck. It's always got something to do with luck about it, largely. Um, and uh, so I saw um, then, because I, you know, again with that, with that sort of uh, um, youthful zeal, I saw that as quite a breakthrough because these were, you know, this was clearly going to be a. Uh, film that was allegedly worth watching. But then when I got to America, I realized it just doesn't matter. It's just irrelevant. You know, it's sort of, uh, and I came back, the best part of the story, I think, we were in Robert De Niro's Tribeca screening theater on the Saturday night, premiering this thing in New York. And, you know, I had people like Peter Bogdan, <coughs> great, great cinema directors coming up to me and Connolly and going, um, and this is going to make you guys pretty famous. This is an amazing movie. This is great, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, well, you can't walk down the street without being eaten alive in the UK. You don't even know who the fuck there is. Do you know what I mean? It's really bizarre. And then I got back to London on the Tuesday morning, signed on a Hornsey Road Dole office, and I didn't work for eight months. So that's what the job is. And part of the job is retaining your sanity when people say, this is amazing, this is what's going to happen, this will be extra, and realising that it doesn't just happen. David's workshop you know, was very constructive, um, he was very generous with his time and with his answers, he really listened to everyone's questions and gave us um, 
as useful an answer as he could, um, was very positive towards everyone and um, gave very practical advice that you can take forward as an actor. It is a very, very uh, cruel business, you know, you can't bullshit about this, you know, I mean, I left Bravo in 1987 with 28 other actors, four of us make a living as actors now. You've got to learn to deal with the fact that it's you who is being dismissed and not given that opportunity. Um, that's the key. And I think it's realising that it's not the be all and end all. It's pretty close, but it's not the be all and end all. And, you know, what I, I think what I found, especially, you know, work, because by definition, I, I mean, I'm doing a job at the moment with actors that I've known for 30 years. You know, we've watched each other's ups and downs, we've watched each other going for two years without work and thinking he's going to have to give up soon or whatever. And, we've, and, and I see them and they're all okay. And nobody did die of poverty. So it's okay. It's fine to be out of work for three years. Chris Eccles, Eccles you know, Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. Chris was out of work for three, he couldn't get arrested. <coughs> do you know what I mean? So, you know, he'd be on the blower going, what do I do? You know, I can't, you know, I've got to give up, haven't I? We're going, yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. We learnt a lot. Nice to spend a Sunday afternoon doing what you love, learning from someone who's been doing it for so long. As an actor, I think you've got to, um, you've got to accept as well that unless you're going to get out and write and produce as well, then your fundamental job is to interpret somebody else's work. I think the best note that I was ever given as an actor, um, this was by uh, Bill Gaskill, who used to run the Royal Court, said, do you think the audience are remotely interested in your ability to act? Not a bit of it. Your function is to serve the narrative. Whatever happens, you know, it's down to you. You know, the agent can be held unaccountable for anything because all they can do is open a door. Some are really good at opening the door, some aren't that great at opening the door, but they're really nice people. You know, so um, you have to take total responsibility and you have to live or die by your work. And you're only as good as your last job, you know. Um, that's what I'd say. So good luck. I hope it all goes absolutely brilliant for you. Like I say, hang in there until you can hang in there no longer, because uh, when you're doing it, it's great, you know. Showing the Grammys around Cabri Land, not quite so great. So <laughs> uh, the rough and smooth. So thank you all very much. It's been such a great afternoon. In just a couple of hours, I've learned quite a lot. Um, which I'll take away with me in future productions. I think it's such an inspirational scheme. I've already started recommending it <laughs> to friends and fellow actors, and I'll definitely continue to do so. Pay a pound, and then you can go to all of these workshops for the whole of the year, So, and it's an amazing cause. Absolutely recommend my million to one. I think it's a fantastic cause. I think the work behind it is um, laudable, and I think that the, the workshops and the events that are provided are a great way to network and to meet people and to learn something that you couldn't have learned before.